Uh, so, uh, uh, Nestio uh, developer portal. Uh, we are. Uh, I've been a technical writer for over uh, twenty years. At Nestio, uh, for two and a half years now. Uh, brought on to help improve developer portal, and I'll I'll talk more later about that journey. Of course, of course. Uh, work as a technical writer. There. My current title and work is more as the product manager as we've gotten more into uh, improving that experience for our users. We, we uh, figured out that uh, we needed someone to kind of guide that. So uh, we'll be we're going over the points, the same points that uh, the other uh, presenters have done. So, so let's get going. Okay. So um, we have a variety solutions that are types of businesses, payment needs of businesses and all types. Uh, in, they're designed to help them conquer the complexities of payment, uh, the, help them get the knowledge they need and tools they need to succeed. Uh, wiring the features from uh, AI fraud prevention to cross-border payments, intelligent payment routing, uh, and the to Revolutionize the payments industry, become strategic partners to our customers, uh, helping them achieve while fueling a uh, mutual growth. And so there's a little bit of information about us as well. Um, our our uh, developed portal journey has uh, had quite a <laughs> over the past couple of years. Originally, uh, our documentation started out as a homegrown system. Uh, it was created and maintained by a software engineer uh, who was interested in doing technical writing. Um, that um, coding tools uh, to create markdown files, command line build tools, printers, GitHub, all the things, uh, and uh, that then went into delivering the website is you know a screenshot of what you hear uh, it was one long web page uh, with navigation to each part of it uh, our customer and partner integration process was long and complicated required a lot of hand holding and so uh, you can see a little bit more specifically here uh, in an effort to Prove accuracy and completeness of information. You know, we started creating a Dev Portal team. At first, it was just about being um, comprehensive for the API endpoints that we were documenting, um, and then uh, even more. So we asked um, our current time for feedback um, and got some valuable insights from that. And then we also did. Uh, uh, an evaluation uh, uh, against you know documentation developer portals as we've you know learned through Pronovix and others, and uh, we set up a scoring system uh, for for developer portals in general, and scored ours against standard. Uh, we came out with about sixty six percent the maximum score and realized we had a, a lot of work to do. Uh, we had areas for improvement um, to meet the business objectives we have of helping our customers start to make money uh, with us. And then uh, like better release notes, more current release notes, better organization uh, as navigation was problematic and better search results uh, because they were rather less. So we decided to do a complete overhaul uh, we use tools at first, like Stoplight and then um, README as frameworks uh, because we have limited uh, resources. Uh, it gave us a jump start in getting to where we wanted to be. Uh, it also gave tools like the Try It feature uh, that we hadn't had before. Um, and it was able to get, help us um, topics into um, separate pages. 
uh, as, such as this. Since that initial overhaul, uh, we've added features uh, and focused on things that improved um, that score uh, to get to where we want to be. So we've done things like uh, we engaged a third party to implement uh, a merchant website using our documentation, and then they gave us feedback on the whole process. So we were able to see it from uh, an outsider's point of view. Uh, and they gave us all of the long list of things to improve upon. Um, and then um, recently we've added things like uh, recipes, which is a, a README feature. We really um, like how it can um, shorten the inner time because our, our developers who are using this are able to have a whole set of uh, code and to see how how our APIs actually work uh, or would work in their process. Uh, we also added a chatbot and uh, got a lot more examples and simplified the sandbox creation process and use of API test user account. I guess that was back that is the try it area. Um, we talked about uh, there's a test user account that they can use, and uh, logged in users can see a history of um, both the ones that succeeded and the ones that failed to help them uh, improve the, the responses they're getting and make sure they're getting what they need. All right, we'll go forward again. Okay, so then there. All right, um, so how did we do all this? How do we manage this developer portal? Um, I have been the one behind uh, making the developer portal. Um, we've had times where we've employed additional technical writers to help, but I have been the person in charge of writing it, planning and implementing. So, you know, all the answers point back, to all the fingers point back to me. Um, I do work with a great developer team. We have integration support team who all help with the entire process. Um, so helping as I add content to review it, to uh, occasionally provide um, uh, guidance or developer help to get things working, such as the integration we have with our backend through README to like log in and and connect all of that up. Um, the the SME typically maintain uh, confluence pages or uh, or we have meetings uh, to get me the need or uh, put that information in Jira, which we use as our our tracking tool for um, for features and and stuff in development. Um, we have a fairly quick turnaround in getting uh, outcomes, uh, so changing documentation. We typically work in, in two weeks sprints, um, and um, and I also participate in the develop the, in the other developer teams' uh, meetings and plannings uh, to help make sure there's a smooth transition between releases. Uh, and uh, having a chatbot has allowed me to also interact directly with users. Um, I've worked with uh, our marketing team to coordinate kind of the story that we have and the products of or feet that are available um, to make sure those different decision makers are getting the information they need. Uh, we started working on adding videos and uh, do our company blog with things that are relevant to uh, the developer portal. I meet weekly with our integrations support team uh, since they interact directly with customers on a daily basis. Um, I also uh, coordinate every couple of weeks with other groups such as marketing and support uh, in coordination meetings to make sure that uh, nothing is cracks. So we gather uh, lots of metrics um, just a, a small sample of different metrics we're getting. 
um, we get uh, from many different places. So um, Jira or Google Analytics or the chatbot analytics uh, metrics we can use, README does. Uh, and we use these, uh, or we have many interesting or metrics that are interesting that we're tracking. So most of them are for me to see how people are using the dev, the developer portal. Um, generally, we're looking to increase engagement and speed up their implementation time. Um, and I use the metrics every um, every sprint I have to plan and improve on where to focus on changes. Um, I've also been interesting, uh, I don't know of anybody else who's started this yet, um, but using AI like ChatGPT to help me with this data look for patterns, concerns of areas where uh, we prove. Um, it's been uh, very interesting. I've, uh, for example, uh, it uh, chat uh, talked to me about um, the, the rise in the, the number of users of visitors uh, since we began on this um, and how the majority of traffic comes from external search engines and it you know which of course i know i can see that data but telling me that it's you know because it's been increasing over time and it comes from external search engines means that our seo efforts that we've been putting in are are coming to fruition they're actually working um, the also the average session duration and engagement time has been increasing over the months. And um, that indicates that the users are finding our content relevant and are spending more time at the portal. The number of pages per session and per user has been increasing, suggesting that our users are exploring more content. So all of this is really great news for us. Um, then uh, so pointed out some potential areas for improvement, such as um, mobile engagement, uh, uh, the number of mobile users or users coming from a, a mobile device has been increasing uh, over the, the months. And so uh, maybe looking at improving that experience for our users or users on those platforms. Um, also links to Freshdesk and uh, our blog and so forth, maybe investigating some declining clicks to those. Uh, maybe there's a technical issue or UI barrier um, that uh, we're not aware of. So all of those were really interesting to chat with an AI about in regards to metrics. Um, but specific metrics that we really care about. Um, it's important to show our customers that we are living listening and fixing issues that they find just in the software, but, but in the developer portal. Um, and so I've been tracking uh, I, errors that customers identify um, and how long it takes that are specifically related to documentation and how long it takes. And so I've been working um, hard to bring that down as low as we can uh, with the process. Um, the engagement rate has been really climbing, as our AI noted, um, and so that's exciting. So we want to make sure that uh, people are getting something out of the visits to our developer portal. Um, engagement time. Uh, the average uh, time has been increasing, um, but this is also tricky, right? As many of you probably know, we want uh, we like that the content on our site seems uh, useful and we uh, know what cus but we also know customers users of the site want to get the information they need and then get to work get back to work they don't want to just read our site you know it, it's not the novel i've been working on this is something they need just to get the information and get out so um, we are still working to determine a good duration like where do they really need to be uh, and so we're tracking that and uh, interacting closely with our users. Uh, new users to the developer portal uh, is the the main metric that we currently uh, track with uh, the executive team at Nexio, uh, uh, tracking um, you know, developer portal and customer interaction. And it, this is also important with our sales team. 
Um, I work with them. I send a, a weekly update to the sales team to with information about the users who have accessed the portal over the past week, um, especially, of course, focusing on these first time users to see if there is any potential uh, areas for upselling or identifying potential new customers, uh, making sure users are getting assistance they need. Um, so in any case, there are lots of uh, metrics and stats that we could look at um, for improvement, but we're just looking at a few at a time to make sure that we are getting, uh, we're not getting distracted from our main goals. So one of our key marketing messages is how our centralized API um, integrates with an extensive network of local and global payment service providers. Um, we emphasize how using a, uh, a single can minimize the friction, as our marketing team likes to say, of managing payments. While we do target software companies, um, we do not usually speak directly to developers until after a contract is signed. So our sales team works almost exclusively with uh, C-level uh, people and the developers are brought in once we begin planning the integration. So it's really important uh, to us to ensure the developers have as positive experience with us in the development process as the C-levels had in the sales process. So hence the addition of the chatbot and the other features I mentioned. Uh, the majority of our revenue comes from on and processing fees. Um, however, we have monetized our integrations so we can profit from that as well. Uh, the integration portion is what, of course, I'm mainly focused on. Um, and immediately when a customer is brought on, they get integration or information from our integration support team which includes links to the portal and APIs, um, best practices, um, instructions for how to get use out of the APIs for fast integration. And of course, uh, as I pointed out, the recipes is a big part of how we are trying to reduce some of that friction. Um, we've also spent a lot of time on the getting started section of the site to try to clarify and answer questions up front in order to get that um, customer retention and uh, that we're looking for. So it, it's been a pleasure to share you with you kind of what our, our business alignment has been. Uh, so thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I was having, okay, this I want to yeah. ask and then you immediately answered it. This I want to ask and you immediately <laughs> answered it. Okay. So let me, let me ask a bit more open question um, Two, uh, and they're connected one. Um, what is your current definition of success for the portal? And uh, two, where is the edge? Where do you feel that there is turbulence and it's the, the known unknowns? Mm. That is a great question. Thanks. <laughs> um, I th so first, what is my definition of success? Um, my time or my roadmap as a definition of success is to help our customers uh, or users get their integration, um, use our dot dev portal with a, as little friction as possible. So as minimal interaction, as minimal um, time as possible. Um, in order to get them up and running. And because as I said, you know, our customers are mainly you know, merchants, people who are trying to make money and we want them to get doing that as fast as they can. And so getting that time down is a, a significant measure of success for me. Uh, and I think in general, um, you know, helping the developers, who, whatever product company you, know, you want your your customers to use and get using it as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the second part or, <laughs> was uh, 
the the outer bounds right the the friction points or the how did you say the i used the word turbulence but turbulence yes same difference yes <laughs> um yeah the the main uh turbulence uh for for us i think especially as a, so a small team is getting everything uh, done that needs to be done within a, a reasonable time frame. Um, there's so many things we could do, finding the right, uh, the best option to work on at a time is really, uh, is a challenge. Um, and we, there's been a lot of start stop kind of things uh, that we've had to do um uh, so yeah that's a, a big one uh money of course any <laughs> company you know budgeting for you know putting money into a developer portal it's uh, it can't especially when the money isn't coming directly from the apis themselves but perhaps the usage of them um, it can be a a challenge to show the value of investing more resources in the developer portal. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I have been very uh, insistent on tracking as well as I can all of these metrics so that I can help um, my company understand the alignment with the business and improving the business. Mm -hmm. What type of users does the developer portal have and how do you make sure they can find the right information? I feel you were kind of talking to this during the presentation. Um, since you are using uh, the, the conversational AI as well, but do you see that customer journey being more in a flow? Do people find the right information faster? Mm. I mean, we are hoping <laughs> they're finding it faster. Um, I I look at the searches that people are doing and and so forth. It seems like people are getting the information they need faster. Uh, I think the the reorganization we did of content, um, looking at improving keywords uh, so that they get the the results uh, needed, has helped. Um, AI. Uh, as we is also on our roadmap for including uh, a more AI in the developer portal in various ways, from search to to results to um, helping them uh, create that integration. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a tricky. So issue. for uh, for a documentation site it's already a very perverse metric to see how much time people spend on it, right? Because you have a lot of conceptual docs, business docs that people you want people to check, but then you have the uh, straight up answer that you don't really want people to, to take a lot of time to find the answer. You want them to find it immediately. Now, right. adding that uh, to that, a conversational AI and, and fully open search, maybe multiple languages, makes this even more perverse. And then if you ask the chat itself, like, so analyze these metrics for me, that is a bit of a catch-22. Do you have plans of how to get out of this? Correct. Um, yeah, there's, <laughs> do I have plans to this? Um, yes and no, yes. So I have thought about the difficulties. I'm not sure how to resolve that yet at this time. Um, it's. Uh, as AI is just, um, you know, evolving so quickly, it's hard to kind of see some of the way ways out. I think um, being able to communicate with um, AI more effectively is important. Um, so I try to do uh, different sessions, for example, with the AI, different um, profiles, as they're called. Um, so rather than using the same chat for asking about my evaluation of metrics and then another one asking about, um, you know, how to change this so that it's coded in 
in, in Python instead of Node or whatever. Um, that I do those in separate so that it's a and it's a different user. So with the metrics one, I'm asking it to assume uh, that it's a you know div or or maybe a, a technical writing manager or a dev portal manager. And then for the other, you know, you're a software developer, and uh, and changing that context for the AI helps to um, helps the AI, AI to know how to react and answer, but also kind of changes the context. So you're not getting in kind of a circular thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I think <laughs> um, there's still a lot of proving. I think uh, to go with AI. You could do some A/B testing there. Right, I'm helping. Yes, I'm helping <laughs> Chat and or Google and and Microsoft and all the other people who are getting their AIs out. Mm -hmm. um, I would be very interested in where you uh, go with this, and even more uh, deeper into the details. It's super fascinating the things that you are saying. So with API, the docs, we're currently talking about having a online. Um, a conference somewhere around the height of February or March next year that will be specifically focusing on practices of using AI as it is state of the art, all the, the tech details and the, the savvy gotchas um, would be really great if you could talk more to that, especially I really like this idea of, okay, um, how do you not beat yourself and use different personas when you want to know different things so that you don't you know, kind of getting to misleading us. So that was really interesting. A question from the audience. How do you prioritize what you include on your portal roadmap? You said that there's some hard hard decisions there for capacity. Yeah, there are. Um, we are looking at uh, improving that capacity. So like, Abdullah, um, <laughs> send me your CVs. Um, <laughs> uh, we're looking at adding more, more help for me. But... Um, I think that, well, there's a couple of things. So, uh, and now I can't remember his name. Uh, Lean Product Development, I think is the name of the book. Um, he talks about uh, quadrants. So value versus um, uh, urgency. Mm -hmm. um, and the bottom quadrant you don't really want to do because it doesn't really matter not urgent because uh, there's no, va no value not right so also kind of goes back to um, the habits of highly effective people think but um and the top one is also not great because it's a lot of value but it's going to take a lot of time to do it it's time yeah so those you don't want to do for it it's the ones that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck first so the the ones that are going to take the least amount of time that are really, really valuable. So like I, I kind of pointed out, we have our, our little heuristics of what a developer portal should be and have and do. Um, so that um, helps me to know uh, the value scale that I want to apply. And then um, and then the time is, you know, how long, ever long it'll take uh, estimate to get that done so that we can kind of map that out kind of as a, a scatter plot um, and then see where the lines go um, and then also um, business wise right so we want to lower the integration time and what are some of those things that will um, achieve that um, mm -hmm. so talking with our users uh, our, you know, the the developers who have implemented it like hiring that that third party team, like I said, was a really eye opening experience. Um, it was especially eye opening, not necessarily for me, because I knew how hard it was when I came on and tried to learn all of the APIs and how everything works, but it was very eye opening to kind of share with our development team. Because, as some many <laughs> technical writers know, the developers, their excuse is usually, well, everybody knows this, it's so easy, right? I could do this in my sleep kind of thing, but they've also been working on this product for years and years, um, usually. And so it helped them to see even these experienced, uh, knowledgeable developers were having where their struggles were. And so mm -hmm. that helped um, us to you know, focus on things that were, were problematic uh, for them. 
Um, and and then finally, of course, the, the integrations team that I work with, um, since they work with active uh, or customers who are actively integrating developers, not just the business uh, decision makers, but the developers, they're able to see those things um, like in real time, what's what is really keeping people back and uh and so we kind of we track those and and i work with them uh very closely mm -hmm. and that's, so, that's so all cool. of these things kind yeah. of figure in somehow uh-huh all right garrett thank you very much for the presentation and for the uh insightful answers um, and I'm looking forward to inviting you to the next uh, API The Docs conference to hear more about this. <laughs> and have Before a great you. time in Alaska. Yeah, thank you. It's been gorgeous.